deals with whole numbers of things. So when we wanna solve equations, we usually are looking for integer solutions. Equations which are intended to only have integer solutions were first studied in the third century by the Greek mathematician Diophantus of Alexandria, and as such are called Diophantine equations. Probably the most famous example of a Diophantine equation is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, the Pythagorean theorem. The integer solutions to this equation are called Pythagorean triples. Hey everyone, real quick, I just wanna mention that this video is a part of a whole course that I made. You can find a link to this entire course in the description below and make sure to click on that subscribe button. In general, solving Diophantine equations is hard. We will restrict our focus to linear Diophantine equations, which are considerably easier to work with. Take a look. An equation in two or more variables is called a Diophantine equation if only integer solutions are of interest. A linear Diophantine equation takes the form a1x1 plus a2 times x2 plus a3 um, x3 plus all the way up to a n x n. I believe that should be, it shouldn't be x sub x there. So that should be a three here. So that's my mistake there. Equals b for constants a1 all the way up to a n and b. A solution to a di Diophantine equation is a solution to the equation consisting only of integers. We have the tools we need to solve linear Diophantine equations. We will consider, as a main example, the equation 51x, if this can work, hold up, 51x plus 87y equals 123. The general strategy will be to convert the equation to a congruence, then solve that congruence. Let's work this particular example to see how this might go. First, check if, perhaps, there are no solutions because a divisor of 51 and 87 is not a divisor of 123. Really, we just need to check whether or not the GCD, the greatest common divisor, of 51 and 87 divides 123, there we go. This greatest common divisor is three, and yes, three does divide 123. At this point, we might as well factor out this greatest common divisor. We're gonna divide everything by three on both sides of the equation. And so we end up getting 17x plus 29y, equals 41. Now observe that if there are going to be solutions, then for those values of x and y, the two sides of the equation must have the same remainder as each other, no matter what we divide by. In particular, if we divide both sides by 17, we must get the same remainder. Thus, we can safely write, and let me give myself some more room here. We can safely write that 17x plus 29y is congruent to 41 mod whatever I pick here. In this case, I'm gonna pick 17. We choose 17 because 17x will have remainder zero. This will allow us to reduce the congruence to just one variable. We could have also moved to a congruence module of 29, although there is usually a good reason to select the smaller choice, as this will allow us to reduce the other coefficient. In our case, we reduce the congruence as, as follows here. So it would be 17x plus 29y equals 41, which reduces to 12y, equals seven mod 17. The 17 becomes a zero, zero times anything is zero. 29 mod 17 is 12 and 41 mod 17 
is seven. Okay, well, seven is the same as 24. Let me give myself some room. Those should be congruences. Seven is the same as 24 mod 17. Now, why did I pick 24? Because I can divide both sides by 12 since 12, the, the GCD between 12 and 17 is one. I can divide safely on both sides by 12. And so Y is congruent to two mod 17, which means that Y equals 17 times some integer K plus two. So now at this point, we know that y equals 17k plus 2, and this will work for any integer k. So I'll put k over here is an integer. If we haven't made a mistake, we should be able to plug this back into our original Diophantine equation to find x. And so 17x plus 29y, which we found was 2 plus 17k or 17k plus two equals 41. Okay, so now we can solve for x here. Um, I'm just gonna skip a little bit of algebra here. We get 17x is negative 17. My, that's a seven. Here, let me give it a better seven than that. <laughs> there we go. Negative 17 minus 29 times 17k. And then we can divide everything by seven, 17 to get x equals negative one minus 29k. We have now found all solutions to the Diophantine equation. For each k, x equals negative one minus 29k and y equals uh, 17k plus two. We'll satisfy the equation. We could check this for a few cases. If k equals zero, the solution is negative one comma two. This would be negative one and that would be two. And you could write that solution as negative one comma two. And yes, negative 17 plus two times 29 equals 41. If k equals three, the solution is negative 88 comma 53. If K equals negative two, we get 57, negative 32. To summarize this process to solve, to solve AX plus BY equals C, which I'll write down actually here. I'm gonna give you guys all, I'm gonna give everyone here a general solution at, at tackling this. If we have AX plus BY equals C, first we divide both sides of the equation by the GCD of A and B. If this does not leave the right hand side as an integer, there are no solutions. Let's assume that AX plus BY equals C has already been reduced in this way. The second step is to pick the smaller of A and B. Here, let's assume it is B and convert A congruence modulo B. And so we would write AX plus BY equals C mod B. This will reduce to a congruence with one variable, X, and we would just have AX equals C mod B. The third step is you wanna solve the congruence as we've done in previous videos. Write your solution as an equation such as x equals, let's say, n plus k times b, where k is an integer and n is an integer. The fourth step is we wanna plug this into the original Diophantine equation and solve for y. If we wanna know solutions in a particular range, for example, x is greater than or equal to zero, y is less than or equal to 20, pick different values of k until you have all required solutions. And so again, that last step is you just plug this into x and solve for y, 
in terms of K. Anyways, thanks everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.